Hey. Okay, so back to uh, the construction phase. Back to reality, right? Importing a design review markup. Now, this process is a bit antiqu uh, antiquated, yet folks are still are still practicing this method. So, uh, I do want to touch on it. And uh, marking up drawings, uh, it's still uh, it's still a position that folks uh, do do, right? Red in, yellow out, all that. So, uh, once you've added markups to the DWX file, save the file and close design review. You can then link the marked up DWFX file back into the Reather project file. Continue to use the sample file from the previous exercise. You can also download the C20 sample markup file from the book's web page. This file already contains some markups to use in the following exercise. Perform these steps to import the markup file into the project file. On the insert tab, choose DWF markup from the file and then select the DWFX file you saved in the previous exercise. This is a simple import dialog box. There are no settings in the window. When you select a DWFX file, only the markups will be shown, not the entire DWFX file. If there are no markups in the file, nothing will be visible in Reddit. In the next dialog box, you will see the, the views in the DWFX file that contain markups and the sheets in the Reddit project to which they will coordinate. You can insert all the markups or only specific sheets. Select the sheets you'd like to import. Be sure to select A101 and then click OK. This uh, is no longer uh, the, the way this, this platform works, it, but it does work to a certain extent. Uh, and again, BIM 360 is something that takes us to the next level. Open sheet A101 from the project browser and you will see the markups as an overlay in the same location where it was created in design review. Markups can be linked only to sheets. If you export a view and mark it up, you will not be able to link that view back into the model. Also, none of the other lines of the DWF will be linked into the model. Any of the building geometry, background sheet content, and so on. The only thing that will be visible in Revit is content created with the DWF markup tool. So let's, it's a lot of words. Let's, let's talk about that for a second. So in the insert tab, you can see on the link uh, the link panel, there's a DWF markup tool. Links marked up with DWF file uh, up. Links marked up DWF links marked up DWF files into a Reddit project so you can see the markups on corresponding sheets. The DWF markups are placed as an important symbol on a sheet in the Reddit project. These markups are pinned in place so you cannot move or manipulate them. So if I click that, you'll see there's a few. Now, um, the one that we created, we really didn't, um, we, we didn't, there's no markups on it. Well, well, I shouldn't say there's no markups on it. It went to, to, to order desk for design review. I didn't use design review to mark it up. Um, so there's no markups on it. But we have a sample to use. So if I go to sample building, you'll notice that there's no um, there's no markups in this one. Some sheets have no markups at all and will not be loaded. So I'm uh, not going to do that one. Let's go back to manage. Let's go to manage links. And let's make sure there okay it's not it's not in. Okay good. So go back to insert. Go back to um, blah, 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 DWF markup, and you'll see a sample marked up DWFX. So open that one up. Now you'll see the dialog box. Uh, and there it is. Okay. Now, as you can see, we have some, some DWF markups that are now part of the design process and the coordination process. So, uh, as you can see, there are instructions for the uh, BIM technician to indeed uh, change some of these things. Um, but again, you can see it's only on the A101 floor plan. So let's uh, undo that. And let's go back up to uh, DWF Marka. And let's go to Marked Up uh, Commented. And let's take a look. Again, same story, only on sheet 101. If we go through all the sheets, you'll see there aren't any other markups um, that were created in the DWFX design review platform. There aren't any other markups on any of the building sections uh, on the area plan uh, for level one and for level two. So um, again, yeah, it's a, it used to be a very intuitive tool and some folks are still utilizing it in the marketplace. But um, um, again, the software is constantly evolving as the uh, industry demands more and more uh, highly precise coordination from um, the stakeholders and Everyone involved, inclusive, uh, all the way down the ladder, inclusive of you, regardless of where you fit into this project. The software is designed to help you. 
However, if you've got some issues, you're only going to project them onto others. And that is not conducive to a concise collaborative process. Now this goes uh, very much deeper into this, whereas you can then um, interact with the link file. So now, you cannot move or delete linked DRF markups. They appear with a pin if selected. However, you can do a number of things to graphically indicate that you reviewed a markup. Change its graphic appearance. Let's say you have 20 red line markups on your sheet. You need to tr keep track of which ones you've picked up. One way to do this is to graphically override each markup as you make the requested modifications. Select the markup, right click, choose view by element and click override gra uh, graphics. Choose a color to indicate done. Yellow works well because it suggests a highlight markup. Hide. This approach is similar to graphic override, but you hide the markup altogether. Select the markup, right click and choose hide in the view element uh, within the context of right mouse clicking. Remove it. You can remove markups by choosing manage links in the manage tab. In the Manage Links dialog box, select the DWF Markup tabs, select the markup, and click the Remove button. This removes all markups associated with the link. Another way you can interact with the link DWF file is, to modify, is by modifying the status or pending comments to each markup. You can access these features in the Properties palette when you select a markup. Now, um, if in, in, the A, in the A101, in the A101 sheet, you created in the A1, I go to the properties palette. In the A101 sheet, you see we're in the properties palette. Change the status drop down list to done and then click the edit button in the notes field. In the edit text dialog box, enter some text related to the completion of the design modification requested in the markup. Click the Apply button at the uh, bottom of the Properties palette or move the mouse pointer out of the Properties palette. Switch to the Insert tab in the ribbon and from the click the, the link panel choose Manage Links. Select the DWF Markups tab. Select the row containing the DW, DWFX file you linked in the previous steps then click the Save Markups button at the bottom left of the dialog box. There is no alert or notification that the save process is completed. So just wait a few seconds. Click OK to close the Manage Links dialog box. Open the DWFX file again in Design Review and you will see that the status of the markup has been updated. The comments you added can be seen in the Markup Properties palette. Using D the DWFX file format along with the integrated tools within Revit, you have a closed communication in group. That has traditionally been an area of difficulty. This workflow also benefits larger project teams because you don't have to manage a central pile of drawing markups that need to be shared and distributed among several teammates. All the staff working on a project will have access to the same linked DDF markups. Okay, now, that isn't necessarily how this process works. Now, if we go into level one, floor plans, uh, and if you go into manage view links, you'll notice in, in, in 2020, uh, there, are, there are certain things you can do and there are certain things you can't do because this text has evolved over the course of time and you don't see these particular uh, practices anymore. It's actually two years old, right? It's two years old. So, I want you to know that it's evolved a little bit. It's evolved a little bit. So why don't we, uh, instead of beating a dead horse with this, why don't we uh, just hold that thought and um, we're gonna be getting into modeling for construction. Because I wouldn't wanna lead you down the wrong path. I wouldn't wanna lead you down the wrong path. Uh, again, 2018 is a long time ago. It's a very, very long time ago. And um, I just, again, I wouldn't wanna see uh, I wouldn't want to see you fall by the wayside. Uh, 2018, like I said, was a very long time ago. And uh, we're, we're pushing 2021 and we're pushing 2022. And, and now that we're in this uh, quarantine six foot distance uh, environment, this new world that we live in, uh, there is, as we speak, being formulated needs to, to, to coordinate uh, 
different processes, just different techniques. So keep your uh, your finger on the pulse of the industry. That would be my uh, recommendation to you. And just follow along, knowing well that I have your best interest in mind. Uh, and uh, um, when it comes to modeling for construction, uh, you'll need to uh, adhere to, uh, to geographic standards. And that goes for you as well as I.